The King's Avatar, Chapter 1587 Glory's Greatest, Audio Source, WushaWorldAudiobook.com. Chapter 1587 Glory's Greatest. Translator, Nomiyami Editor, Nomiyami. This confrontation had everyone on the edge of their seats. Even neutral viewers who were indifferent to both teams felt exceptionally anxious right now. But the most anxious were still those audience members directly affected by the atmosphere of the audience. As well as the players of the two teams who'd been sitting in the player areas for a while now. When Joe Zekai broke through the class design barrier and controlled Cloud Piercer to wield his bullets like swinging blades, the stadium had gone wild. Countless people had jumped up, cheered, hollered. Simsara's power reached its peak, and even the Simsara players on the sidelines had burst into smiles. They were very strong, strong enough to directly push Josekai into number one, but they weren't blindly confident. Competin had wins and losses, and even Josekai couldn't win every single match he was in. Josekai had stumbled in front of seemingly weak opponents before, and the opponent he now faced was Yishu, the glory textbook, the former number one. It wasn't until Josekai demonstrated this absolutely powerful stance that the Samsara players allowed themselves to relax, revealing smiles that anticipated victory. They relaxed, but Happy grew even more anxious. To be able to use gun attacks as close combat attacks, the ferocity that Josekai demonstrated was clear and earth-shaking. Any Glory fan could feel it. In this moment, Chen Guo hoped she was wrong. She hoped that her judgment would once again became a joke, because her skill level wasn't high enough. But when she looked at everyone else, Wei Chen, Fang Rui, the shock written on their faces was the same as hers. Unfortunately, this time she wasn't wrong. Unfortunately, Zhou Zekai was truly strong enough to shock everyone present. But Chen Guo refused to give up, she continued to search everyone's faces for some reassurance, one after another. But nothing, there was nothing, everyone's faces were grim, it was like one punch after another telling Chen Guo that there was nothing optimistic about this situation. She looked around in a large circle, all the way until she saw Su Muchung, sitting on her other side. And here, she saw an expression different from everyone else's. There was shock, yes. But aside from that, she didn't seem as grim as everyone else. In Su Muchung's expression, Chen Guo saw a sort of grief. Was Su Muchung already feeling grief for Yi Xu's imminent defeat? This person, who knew Yi Xu better than anyone else, did she have a clearer prediction of the situation than everyone else? He hasn't lost yet, Chen Guo suddenly said. Even though the situation wasn't looking good, as long as Lord Grimm still had a drop of blood left, she would hope a miracle. Ah, uh, Su Muchung responded automatically, as though she'd been lost in thought and was suddenly jolted awake. Her expression instantly became very calm. Yes, he hasn't lost yet, she said to Chen Guo. After recovering, her face now brimmed with energy with the unwavering trust in Yi Xu that she always had. He won't lose, Chen Guo said firmly, hasn't lost yet, became, won't lose, quote, this was a wish, a hope, a trust, but there really weren't many who could do the same. In the live broadcast, Pan Lin and Li Yibo already declared Yi Xu's death, and were going back and forth discussing Zhou Zekai's deadly skill. Because of this, Glory might have to undergo a massive rebalancing in the next update, Pan Lin chuckled. His tone was carefree, as though there were no tension in the battle in front of them right now. In his mind, this battle had already ended. Yes, this really is a game changer. Compared to forcing the Alliance to change its rules, forcing the Glory developers to change the game's design is much more drastic, said Li Yibo. Yes yes, he really is too strong. Pan Lin had used this phrase. 
Too strong. Countless times by now. Yes, too strong. But, too strong, didn't mean invincible. It was only, too strong, not, the strongest. The bullets traced blade-like paths in the air, and amidst it all, Lord Grimm suddenly tilted his body. The myriad manifestations umbrella in his hands came apart into two pieces, Tom the form, and at the same time his body trembled. Reinforced iron bones. Lord Grimm didn't dodge, instead suddenly using this skill. Instantly, countless bullets landed directly upon his chest, as though many slashes were cutting into him again and again. Blood spurted, Lord Grimm continued to step forward. He charged through the blood filling the air, his umbrella again shifting to another fighter-class weapon, the claw, and his right hand swiftly thrust forward. Cloud body, strangle. Cloud piercer hurriedly retreated. It might have been a step backward or a jump backward but no one would know. Because this cloud body, this strangle had come so quickly, so suddenly, Josekai had made the inputs, but Cloud Piercer didn't have the chance to display the movement. Lord Grimm's right hand was already tightly gripping his throat. Everyone was stunned. How had the elegant and game-changing Great Gunner been caught by a crude strangle just like that? But, this didn't affect his attack, did it? Everyone could see that although Lord Grimm had rushed forward to seize Cloud Piercer, Cloud Piercer's twin revolvers were still tightly pressed against Lord Grimm's body. Strangle could restrict the opponent's movement, but not their attack. Right now, Joe Zekai didn't even need to aim in order to fire like crazy. In this moment, how much of Lord Grimm's health could he destroy? Peng. A dull sound. A gunshot. No, it was Lord Grimm bashing his head directly against Cloud Pierce's. Immediately, blood began streaming down his forehead. Headbutt. A brawler skill. Only the street-dwelling brawlers would use anything as weapons in a scuffle, even their own heads. This was how they survived the violent street life. Joe Zekai's vision swayed, but even so Cloud Pierce's revolvers were still steady, and the sound of gunshots was as strong as ever. But Lord Grimm's knee was already connecting with Cloud Pierce's abdomen, the force of the impact bending his entire body in half. Knee attack. Under the effect of this half-grab skill, Cloud Piercer finally had no way of maintaining his posture. When his body bent, his arms naturally came down, and his bullets swept the ground. Then, there was an elbow, coming down heavily upon the back of Cloud Pierce's lowered head. As Cloud Piercer crumpled downward, Lord Grimm's other hand was already forming a fist, and an uppercut sent him back into the air. Strangle, headbutt, knee attack, elbow, uppercut. They were all brawler skills, and aside from headbutt, the other four were all sub-level 20 skills. Yet the combination of these attacks managed to break Joe Zekai's remarkable technique. Those shouting and cheering earlier now seemed as though a fist had been shoved in their mouth, rendering them speechless. Chen Guo was excited. No wonder this was Yi Xu. As expected of Yi Xu. This was the Yi Xu that never let her down. Amazing. She shouted. It is. Su Muchung smiled gently. Just like how she wasn't too panicked before, right now she didn't seem too excited. WashaWorldAudio.com When she had seen Joe Zekai's exceptional technique earlier, she had indeed gotten somewhat lost in thought. She thought of her now-deceased older brother Sumuchu, also using a sharpshooter, also possessing incomparably elegant skill and technique. At the same time, she couldn't forget that shock when his sharpshooter autumn tree had been sent sprawling to the ground by Yi Xu's one autumn leaf. Fuck. That was the only time Sumuchung had ever heard Sumuchu swear. For someone like him with such beautiful technique to lose like this, he was surprised, flustered, and exasperated. Could your fighting be any cruder?
Su Muchung still remembered the mockery that Su Muchu had often thrown at Yi Xu. The two of them had never got tired of fighting back and forth, using all sorts of classes and all sorts of characters. Su Muchu had even specifically gotten a little notebook to write down the win-loss record between the two of them. He gave it to Su Muchung to take care of. Don't look. Yi Xu had wanted to see it, but he never got permission. We're basically tied, there's nothing to look at. Quote. That was what Su Mu Chu always said, but Su Mu Chung, as the one holding the notebook, of course knew that Yi Xu was always in the lead. They had that youthful spirit of always wanting to outdo the other. Su Mu Chu certainly wasn't keeping track of the win record because he wanted to display his failures. But unfortunately, in the end, he had been unable to tie the score. The notebook had been taken away with the rest of Su Mu Chu's belongings. But Su Mu Chung would sometimes think, if they had managed to continue playing play all the way until now, play for these ten years, then what kind of record would that notebook hold? Who was Glory's greatest? Everyone had an answer in their heart, and because of emotional bias, this answer would never be universal. Yi Xu, for example, always felt that if Su Mu Chu were still alive, he would definitely be Glory's greatest player. This thought was tangled up with feelings of loss and regret towards the one who had passed away. But in Su Mu Chung's heart, the greatest was Yi Xu. Even though she also missed Su Mu Chu, she still believed this because this was what her brother told her, Yi Xu, the greatest. So, in this attention-catching match between Glory's number ones, from the very beginning, Su Muchung had had an answer in her heart. No matter what the result was, her answer wouldn't change. As soon as he was sent into the air by the uppercut, Cloud Piercer was already readjusting his aim. Zhou Zekai's reaction was both fast and accurate. While in mid-air, he couldn't see Lord Grimm at all, but based on his experience and awareness, the dual revolvers in Cloud Pierce's hands fired down shot after shot. Bullets rained down, that was truly the only way to describe it. The bullets that came out of his guns were all aimed in different directions, with a slight adjustment in angle after every shot. The bullets instantly poured out, covering the maximum possible area. But, so what? Yi Xu ignored him entirely. Lord Grimm's chest remained upright as he welcomed the bullets that rained down, and continued to attack. Because the distance was close enough because the two characters were almost right on top of each other. Even if Zhou Zekai could rely on his exceptional technique to turn Cloud Pierce's bullets into blades, no matter what, he couldn't change the fundamental design of the game. The priority of long-range attacks couldn't compare to that of close-range. Turning firepower into blade work, no matter how beautiful it was, it couldn't control a situation as solidly or securely as true close-range attacks. Dot. This was the most basic of principles. Or, in other words, this was the crudest of principles. End chapter. The King's Avatar. Chapter 1588. Simple and clean. Audio source. WushaWorldAudiobook.com. Chapter 1588. Simple and clean. Translator. Nomiyami editor. Nomiyami. All the cheers and screaming stopped. Only the sound of the fight between the two characters remained. The viewers watching at home wanted to know what exactly had happened, but the commentators, who had been talking excitedly just before, had suddenly quieted down. It seemed like the only thing that could be heard from them were coughing sounds. Pan Lin and Li Yibo were on the verge of tears. The two felt like they had been thrown onto the... What could they say? What did they still dare to say? Even if the two had a million things to say about the current situation, they couldn't put the words together. The embellishment that the two had blurted out just a moment ago was like a whip. After twirling the whip in a circle, they had winded it around their own necks. The harder they pulled, the harder it became to say anything. 
The commentators were supposed to be neutral, without any bias for either side. They hadn't been excited because they wanted Simsara to win, but rather because Josekai's stunning play had excited them. If such stunning and beautiful playing couldn't win, then how could the heavens be fair? The two had said those words because of this belief. Otherwise, the countless time that Yi Xu had slapped their face would have reminded them to be cautious. How else could they have gotten excited and predicted the outcome even when the other side had more than half his health left? In that instant, they had indeed thought that Josekai was invincible. In that instant, they had forgotten that there was no such thing as absolute victory in a match. In that instant, they had forgotten that the match wasn't over until the last drop of blood flowed. It had been the case before, and it always would be. However, breaking Josekai's breathtaking four-step gun fu didn't mean that Yishu had won either. Cloud Piercer was still in the lead by a considerable amount of health. Even if Yishu had seized the initiative Josekai's might was no less than before. For the average player, an airborne character was the sign of someone about to get thrashed. However, Joe Zekai's Cloud Piercer continued to attack while in the air. A rain of bullets descended, making it feel as if whatever was beneath it was a lamb in a tiger's den. Yishu didn't seem to see it though. Lord Grim tanked the bullets and continued his attacks. A trade. Lord Grim had less health. A trade didn't seem to be wise though. Pan Lin and Li Ye both thought the same thing, but remained silent. They were too afraid to try and guess Yi Xu's intentions. Moonlight slash full moonlight slash wave wheel slasher. Lord Grimm's myriad manifestations umbrella suddenly transformed from a fighter weapon into a swordsman weapon. Three slashes one after the other. Light filled the sky as Cloud Piercer tumbled through the air. Even Joe Zekai had no way to steady his character facing such fast successive attacks. Cloud Pierce's shots began to miss their mark. The rain of bullets seemed to have split apart from the three bright sword lights, and Cloud Piercer was locked into place by the wave wheel slasher, magic rendering him apart. Vision. Joe Zekai understood that this was the key point. He could only make the appropriate response if he could grasp the opponent's movements. However, Lord Grimm followed close on his heels. In an instant, he moved into a dead angle where Cloud Piercer wouldn't be able to see him. Vanishing Step This difficult and complicated technique was already second nature to him. As soon as he saw his target airborne, he would use this technique out of habit to continue the combo. Even in the pro scene, there were many players who were helpless against Vanishing Step, but Yi Xu wasn't so naive to think that Joe Zekai would be one of them. He recognized Joe Zekai's skill clearly. Whether it worked or not, he had to at least try. It was an ideology that both of them agreed on. Joe Zekai wasn't able to see his target, but by process of elimination, he had a rough idea of Lord Grimm's position. Cloud Piercer wasn't able to turn his head towards that direction, but his hands were more nimble than his head. The trustworthy guns in his hands, Wildfire and Shattered Frost, instilled fear into anyone who saw them, the guns of the Gunner King. Fire burst out. This time, he wasn't spreading out his attacks to cover more area. He was aiming precisely towards his dead angle. Bang 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 bang. Bullets descended. The distance was too close, and Yi Xu didn't have time to react to it. However, he had never intended on dodging. Bullets could hurt him, but they couldn't stop him from attacking. The transforming myriad manifestations umbrella struck Cloud Piercer repeatedly. Because of these destructive hits, the once precisely aimed gunfire once again became scattered. Joe Zekai's situation isn't looking good. Pan Lin finally braved it out and spoke, once he saw that Yi Xu had the upper hand. M.M. He, quote, 
Before Li Yibo could finish his sentence, he shut his mouth and stared with wide eyes. Lord Grimm's combo had made Cloud Piercer lose his aim. His bullets no longer followed a straight path, but rather an arc. Curve firing. Pan Lin shouted. Curve firing wasn't a technique, but rather a sharpshooter skill. Of the four gunner classes, sharpshooters emphasized firing technique. Many of their skills were buffs. For example, rapid firing and burst firing. For a period of time, the skills gave the user increased firing speed or critical hit chance. Curved firing made the bullets curve. How much the bullets curved was set by the system by default, but the user could manually control it too. Josekai had Cloud Piercer use curved firing while in an airborne state. Despite losing control of his aim due to Lord Grimm's attacks, many of the curved bullets still headed towards Lord Grimm. Joe Zekai had taken into consideration the fact that Lord Grimm would be comboing him, so he used curved firing as a counter. He wasn't so godly that he could accurately calculate the trajectories of all of the bullets, but with so many bullets being fired, some of them were bound to hit. It hadn't been easy for Pan Lin and Li Yibo to resume their commentating, but now they had been stopped in their tracks again. Today's situation was looking grim. No matter which side they talked about, they would immediately be slapped in the face. The two wanted to cry. What should they do? It wasn't like they could stay silent, no. The two were quiet, but the crowd wouldn't be. Those curved bullets flew around, like wild bees, completely unpredictable. Yishu could only try his best to dodge them, but many of them still landed. However, curved firing only affected the trajectory. It didn't increase the damage or have any other effects. As a result, Lord Grimm could still continue his attacks. Sky Strike the myriad manifestations umbrella transformed into a spear and swung upwards towards the falling Cloud Piercer. Just when it looked as if it was about to hit, Cloud Piercer's dual guns suddenly turned towards him and fired two shots. The recoil made him move away slightly, and this slight displacement was enough for Lord Grimm's sky strike to miss. The skill bold. Joe Zekai could have obviously done it earlier, utilizing the recoil to adjust himself while in the air, but he didn't because he knew that Ye Zhu would certainly have countermeasures. He had intentionally waited for Ye Zhu to act first before doing this at the very last moment, so Ye Zhu wouldn't have time to readjust his attack. Finally, Cloud Piercer was back on the ground. Cloud Piercer landed and rolled, but before he could get up, he saw a grenade out of the corner of his eye. Boom. The grenade exploded, and Cloud Piercer was thrown to the side. Cold light flashed. Lord Grimm used Shing Ark to close the distance, cross slash upward slash. Cloud Piercer was in the air again. He wasn't able to dodge it. Samsara's fans felt a blow to their hearts. They watched as their ace player used everything at his disposal while taking a beating, yet still failed to escape. Bang 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 bang. Gunfire sounded again. Joe Zekai refused to give up, but everyone had noticed long ago that his attacks had no effect on Lord Grimm's offense. Lord Grimm simply took the hits and continued attacking. This, washourworldaudio.com, isn't good, right? Pan Lin carefully expressed. Li Yibo didn't even follow up. The fight between the two number ones was truly too high level for them. They talked about this, but it was wrong. They talked about that, but they weren't sure. At this point, he and Pan Lin basically existed to get their faces slapped. It was too humiliating. Unfortunately, the one to suffer the most would be Pan Lin. After all, Li Yibo was considered an invited guest. His status was slightly higher, so while it might be okay for Li Yibo to not say anything, it was not okay for Pan Lin. Pan Lin could only brace himself and blabber away. He has no way to force Yi Zhu back. 
Pan Lin's voice was like a mosquito. And this time, he was right. Ye Zhu couldn't be forced back. Lord Grimm continued to attack. He wasn't afraid of this sort of competition. Zhou Zekai understood this point too. And he hadn't been hoping that he could force Yi Zhu to retreat because he understood Yi Zhu's thoughts. The priority of close ranged skills was far higher than long ranged skills. Zhou Zekai hadn't forgotten this kind of basic knowledge. He didn't think his bullets could compete with close combat from an unspecialized. Everyone else had been cheering excitedly because it had seemed like Zhou Zekai had broken a seemingly unshakable barrier between close-ranged and long-ranged classes. However, Zhou Zekai knew clearly that it was because she had no other choice. Lord Grimm had been too close to him. It wasn't good for sharpshooters to get closed in on. It was logic that even a noob in glory would know. But everyone had believed in him because he was Zhou Zekai, and there was nothing he couldn't do apart from healing. That was why although it was common sense that the situation had been unfavorable for a sharpshooter, it shouldn't be a problem for Zhou Zekai. Even if his opponent had closed in, the one to be taught a lesson would be the opponent. In reality, it had indeed been the case numerous times. Even when Zhou Zekai's opponents were able to close, they would often be the ones who lost. Zhou Zekai didn't become arrogant though. Others could believe that his sharpshooter was invincible even in close combat. He himself couldn't. It wasn't good for sharpshooters to get closed in on. Zhou Zekai, the current number one player, hadn't overlooked this logic that even a noob understood. When he played, he would still follow this principle. After being closed in on by Lord Grimm, he had been trying to get away. However, while running away, he wouldn't miss an opportunity to injure his opponent. That was why he had used Thunder Snipe earlier and given Cloud Piercer a nearly 33% health lead. With this lead, Zhou Zekai began to use Gunfu to fight because at that time, he had decided to trade blow, trade health for health. In other words, the thought that he could completely suppress Yi Zhu with Gunfu hadn't even crossed his mind. The reason that he had used Gunfu was to trade. Trading meant that I hit you, and you hit me. The Gunfu was like this, and it was the same afterwards even when Yi Zhu seized the upper hand. However, Zhou Zekai never let go of any opportunities to injure Lord Grimm. By relying on this sort of accumulation of damage along with Cloud Pierce's health lead, even in these disadvantageous trades, he would be the one to win in the end. Zhou Zekai was certain of it. As for all that flashiness, that was just a service to the plain and simple glory principle. The one with more health bullied the one with less. End chapter. The King's Avatar. Chapter 1589 Trade. Audio source. WusharWorldAudioBook.com. Chapter 1589 Trade. Translator. Nomiyami Editor. Nomiyami. Those who supported Yi Xu or those who worried for Zhou Zekai didn't quite understand the current situation. From start to finish, the only ones who remained unaffected were Team Simsara and Zhou Zekai's teammates. Because they understood Zhou Zekai's personality and play style. Their captain, who was considered the number one player in glory, was never arrogant. Fighting close ranged as a long ranged class. That would be the epitome of arrogance. How could their captain entertain such a useless thought? If Zhou Zekai decided to play in such a way, that simply meant it was necessary. So that's what he did. Cheers and screams were fine. After all, it was indeed an incredibly beautiful display of skill. But if you had to say that it was the pinnacle of glory or a revolution, that would be nonsense. Even Samsara snorted disdainfully at Pan Lin's word choice, and then when Yi Xu slapped him in the face, they rejoiced at his misfortune. Because they were the same as Zhou Zekai. Playing like this would be exciting for the viewers, but it wouldn't be enough to suppress an expert like Yi Xu. 
As a result, they had never thought that Yishu would be beaten down by Josekai in this way. What they saw was a trade. With Josekai having the health lead, he was trading with Yi Xu's Lord Grimm. Even though Yi Xu had the upper hand in these trades, the outcome of these trades lead towards Josekai's victory. The battle continued, at a rapid pace. The average viewer didn't understand the reality of this situation. The pro players wouldn't make this mistake though. Quite a few of them had begun calculating the DPS from both sides to determine who the winner would be. Joe Zekai would win. Joe Zekai would win. Joe Zekai would win. This was what Zhang Shinji, Yu Wenzu, and Wang Jiexi concluded. The others, who hadn't yet reached a conclusion, stopped calculating. If those three all agreed, then what was there to argue about? Right now, Joe Zekai would win without a doubt. But it's risky. Thunderclaps Seo Shichen said. Everyone nodded their heads. Joe Zekai would win at this rate, and he had it under control at the moment. However, he was playing against Yi Shu's unspecialized, who had the upper hand in these trades. The slightest mistake could mean disaster. Until the very end, it was hard to say who exactly would win. But looking at Simsara, it seems like they're not worried at all. Yu Fang said. The pro players had special VIP seats, facing the stage directly. They were situated quite close to the two competing team seats, so they could see the expressions on each team's players. On happy side, there was quite a bit of commotion going on there. Their expressions were heavy. They clearly realized where the issue lay. As for Simsara, everyone there was quite relaxed. There would occasionally be a few whispers here and there, but it just seemed to be casual chatter. Josekai isn't being completely dominated. Through his attempts to escape, he's restricting Yi Xu and giving himself opportunities to seize the upper hand, Zhang Jiale suddenly said. Yes, Han Wenqing affirmed. Yi Xu's situation is probably worse than we think. Chu Yangshu said. If you ride a tiger, it's too hard to get off. It's kind of giving off this feeling, isn't it? Yeah. Joe Zekai isn't letting a single drop of water slip through. The pro players unanimously agreed. Yi Xu's situation wasn't like what the average viewers thought. After breaking through Joe Zekai's gun fu, Yi Xu wasn't completely dominating the fight. The current situation was the same as the previous situation against Joe Zekai's gun fu, different methods to achieve the same goal. With Joe Zekai's Cloud Piercer having the health lead, Yi Xu couldn't let go of the opportunity to fight him at close range. No matter what, he had to stick close to him. When Joe Zekai tried to escape, he had to stop him at all costs, and Joe Zekai would use this opportunity to deal heavy damage and trade with him. This was what the pro players had concluded. From a certain perspective, Joe Zekai held the initiative. If you ride a tiger, it's hard to get off. It was indeed the case. Yi Zhu probably knew that he wouldn't be able to win if he continued trading like this, but what could he do? If he let Cloud Piercer escape and widened the distance between them, he would be in an even more disadvantageous position. The battle continued, and the two characters were both losing health. Cloud Piercer was losing health faster, while Lord Grimm was losing health slower. In the end, the unspecialized Lord Grimm had the advantage in close combat. Only Joe Zekai could trade with Yi Xu in this situation. By relying on his health lead, his health was still higher than Lord Grimm's even if he was losing health faster. As more time went on, this difference in health became more apparent. The viewer slowly began to notice it, and soon, sounds of discussion and doubt unfolded. They had thought that Joe Zekai was in a terrible spot, but from the looks of it, if this continued, he would probably win. Although Cloud Piercer is losing health rather fast, it looks like it won't ever be lower than Lord Grimm's. 
Pan Lin carefully said. This is because of the early advantage that he obtained before. Li Yibo finally spoke. He was quite confident in his words. He had seen the critical strike from the thunder snipe. The past was the past. It couldn't be changed, no. If this continued, Yi Zhu will. Will. Pan Lin stuttered. He was just too afraid of saying the word. Lose. We can't relax until the end. Li Yibo said. Pan Lin couldn't help but glance at him. Was this really the same person who had been fighting with him to proclaim Zhou Zekai the winner? Red health. Pan Lin shouted. Red health meant health below 10%. Although it didn't affect a character's stats, whether it was a normal player or a pro player, red health was usually a signal for danger. Lord Grimm was at red health. Zhou Zekai's Cloud Piercer still had 22% of his health left. Yi Xu had closed the initial gap by a considerable amount, but it wasn't enough. Judging from their previous trades, Lord Grimm's 10% could trade for approximately 15% of Cloud Pierce's health, about a 1 to 1. 5 ratio. On the pro stage, this figure was already very impressive. If it was any other occasion, this ratio would be unlikely. However, for this fight, this ratio wouldn't be enough to catch up. In the end, using a 1 to 1. 5 ratio to beat a 22% health opponent with 10% wasn't going to happen. But, that 1 to 1. WushaWorldAudio.com 5 ratio was an average. There were many back and forths, and not every exchange would result in this ratio. Sometimes, it would be higher. Yi Zhu needed to be higher in order to win. Not everyone had these numbers, but just looking at the health, even a noob knew that Yi Zhu wasn't in a good position. The audience could stop and discuss it, but the ones playing couldn't. 22% against 10%. In the blink of an eye, the 22% became 19%. A 1 to 2 trade. The audience wasn't too perceptive. After all, they weren't precise enough to calculate the numbers. However, the pro players were more acute. Yi Zhu wanted to use this final moment to burst down Zhou Zekai. Gore Cross. Predicting where Cloud Piercer would land, Lord Grimm rushed forward to use Gore Cross to trap him. Sword light overlapped, forming a cross shape. Bang 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 bang. Gunshots. Cloud Piercer never seemed to stop firing. As soon as he encountered Yi Xu's Lord Grimm, Cloud Piercer never stopped to rest. Shooting to attack, shooting to borrow the recoil, shooting to fight at close combat. This time, the bullets formed a star, creating a ripple in the Gore Cross. Cloud Piercer's attacks had unexpectedly hit Lord Grimm's cross. Long-ranged attacks had far lower priority than close-ranged attacks, so it wouldn't be able to stop the Gork Cross. However, with so many bullets hitting, it would displace it somewhat. Sword light streaked across, hit. There was only one streak of blood. The horizontal slash of Lord Grimm's Gork Cross had hit, but the vertical slash had missed. The skill consisted of two simultaneous slashes, but through precise maneuvering, Joe Zekai was able to dodge one of them. The crowd clapped and cheered wildly. Everyone loved to see these kinds of spectacular plays. But the pro players, who knew about the subtleties of this fight, didn't think it was necessary. Cloud Piercer had double Lord Grimm's health. He had so much room to work with. It was easier to make a mistake doing extremely precise inputs like what Joe Zekai had done, and a mistake could give Yi Xu a chance to turn things around. Why doesn't he rush him down? Voids UCE said. It's better to be cautious. Don't forget that Lord Grimm can heal. Zhang Shinji said. Heal. He can't health that much, can he? Tiny herbs healer, Yuan Bai King, said. With how the two were fighting, long cast time skills couldn't be used. As a result, the only instant that Lord Grimm's unspecialized could do was a 
small cure. Everyone immediately remembers that Yeesh you could add other healer skills onto his myriad manifestations umbrella, such as Great Cure or Holy Cure. Although these would be at most level 1, instant heals healed a lot of health, but had extremely long cooldowns. Even at level 1, with both players at such low health, it could be enough to save him. Dot. Is he planning on healing? The pro players started getting nervous. They realized that the battle would be decided here. End chapter.